The devil, also referred to as Satan, is best known as the personification of evil and the nemesis of good and God. His image and story have evolved over the years, and the devil has been called many different names in various cultures, from Beelzebub to Lucifer. Christians believe that the devil was once the most beautiful angel named Lucifer, who fell from heaven and grace after he defied God by leading a rebellion in heaven. God then cast Lucifer and a third of all angels in heaven who followed him down to earth, as stated in the Bible. His tail swept the third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. As he is identified as the highest of angels, some theologists think of Lucifer as the highest ranking seraphim, a six-winged angel of light and fire that remained in God's presence daily before he fell. Since one-third of angels fell with Lucifer, we can assume that different ranks and types of angels were among this group who were also beings of light and fire. Many theologists believe that these fallen angels reside with Lucifer in hell under his authority and are now what is known as demons. However, in the book of Enoch, which is not included in the Bible, these fallen angels are said to have found human women beautiful and had taken them as wives and bore offspring. These offspring would be known as the Nephilim or sons of God and daughters of Adam, beings of great strength and ability. In this ancient time, there would then have been fallen angels and Nephilim on earth living amongst humans. Little is known about these beings as the Bible itself does not elaborate on them extensively, merely confirming their existence. However, the book of Enoch further details their nature and their status as being men of greatness who were warriors and rulers. The Christian Bible details the existence of beings forged by God himself from light and fire and their existence on earth amongst men. Furthermore, cultures around the world have believed in these extraordinary beings calling them gods of men. From the Greek gods residing on the top of Mount Olympus, the Mayan gods who are said to have come down from the heavens, and the Egyptian gods with the highest of them Ra, the god of the sun, kings and the sky. In order to extract further evidence for these beings' existence and nature, we may look to Islamic texts for further evidence. So what do Muslims believe? Muslims believe that before the creation of Adam, there lived a race of beings that were created from fire, just like the seraphim. However, as per Sufism, a branch of Islamic mysticism, God created first a smokeless fire named Samun, a fire that is often identified with both the fires of hell and the fire of the sun. From this fire, God created creatures that came to be known as the jinn. The first of the jinn was named Marriage, and God created the second one to be his wife, and she was named Marija. They had a son, and they called him Jinn. From them derived all the clans of the jinns, including a particular jinn named Iblis, who we will get to later on. And so God gave them the earth to dwell and to worship him. However, a disease soon crept into the hearts of the jinns, as many of them would become evil and corrupted, as they would soon wage war, dominate and torment their own kind, especially those who worship God. These corrupted jinns also killed the jinn prophets that God had sent them down to guide them in their many numbers. But amongst the good jinns, there was one jinn in particular who would rise to absolute power, and his name was Iblis. The latter was very pious and had proved his loyalty to God, and in turn, God allowed him to live in heaven and join the company of Malaika, also known as the angels of the Lord. Being part of the company of the angels, Iblis would take on a new name, Azazel. Azazel lived amongst the angels for many years and would act like one despite not being an angel himself, 
as angels are known to be made out of light and not fire. However, as time went by, corruption only increased on earth. And so God decided to send down an army of angels led by Azazel himself to fight the corrupted jinns and banish them into the forsaken islands. Once the angels had established peace on earth, God revealed to his armies of angels that he was now going to create a new Khalifa or ruler on the earth. The latter excited Azazel as he believed that he was going to be crowned ruler on earth or made a prophet of God. But all of his dreams would come crushing down when God revealed the body that he had fashioned from clay that would come to be known as Adam. Unlike the jinns and the angels, God had gifted Adam with the intelligence and the ability to create, making him far more superior than both entities, and thenceforth, God blew Adam's soul into this lifeless body. As Adam's body began to take on life and eyes started to open, God asked his angels to bow down to this new creation of his and pay him their respects. And accordingly, all the angels went down into prostration but one, Azazel. Azazel had from that point lost hope in God due to a new form of disease named jealousy. And God looked at Azazel and asked him, O oh Azazel, what has prevented you from bowing down to something that I have created with my hands? And in arrogance, he responded with, I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from earth and this is why I am better than him. And from that point, he vowed to corrupt the children of Adam and bring them to hell to prove that they weren't perfect and worthy of earth. And so Azazir was banished from heaven and he fell back on earth. And with that, his name Azazir was stripped away from him and he came to be known as Iblis, the one who rose and fell. However, this begs the question, can there be life out there in the universe similar in nature to the jinns or seraphim angels? Well, before we explore the possibilities, we will first assume that the fire summon from which the jinns were created from is a reference to the fire of the sun as it is a bowl of smokeless fire in space. With that being said, According to new research by physicists Louis Ankordoki and Eugene Chasnovsky of the City University of New York, such a thing is indeed, hypothetically at least, possible. It all depends on how we define life. If the key criteria are the ability to encode information and the ability for those information carriers to self-replicate faster than they disintegrate, then hypothetical monopole particles threaded on cosmic strings could form the basis of life inside stars, much like the DNA and RNA form the basis of life on Earth. With that being said, information stored in the RNA or DNA encodes the mechanism of self-replication. Its emergence must have been preceded by the massive formation of random RNA sequences until a sequence was formed capable of self-replication. We believe that a similar process would occur with necklaces in a star leading to a stationary process of self-replication. Cosmic strings and monopoles are thought to have emerged in the early universe. It is postulated that they still exist as artifacts of a long dead era, an era ruled by exotic forces and strange energies may persist. As the universe cooled down from the Big Bang and the particle soup of quark clone plasma that filled it underwent a symmetry-breaking phase transition and condensed into the matter a process akin to water vapor condensing into liquid water. Although we have yet to detect cosmic strings, one-dimensional linear objects or monopoles, elementary particles with only one magnetic pole, a lot of thought has gone into how they might behave. In 1988, Chernovsky and his colleague, theoretical physicist Alexander Velikin of Tufts University, predicted that cosmic strings could be captured by stars. There, the turbulence would stretch the strings until they formed a network of strings. According to the new study, cosmic necklaces could form in a sequence of symmetry-breaking phase transitions. In the first stage, monopoles emerge, in the second, strings. This can produce a stable configuration of one monopole bead and two strings, which in turn could connect to form one, two, and even three-dimensional structures, much like atoms joined by chemical bonds. 
A one-dimensional necklace would be unlikely to carry information, but more complex structures potentially could, and they could survive long enough to replicate, feeding off the fusion energy generated by the star. Compared to the lifetime of the star, its lifetime is an instantaneous spark of light in the dark. What is important is that such spark manages to produce more sparks before it fades away, thus providing a long lifespan of this new kind of life form. From there on, the complexity evolving through mutations and natural selection increases with the number of generations passed. Consequently, if lifetimes of self-replicating nuclear species are as short as lifetimes of many unstable composite nuclear objects are, these aliens can quickly evolve toward enormous complexity. Hypothetically speaking, it's perhaps possible that such a life form could develop intelligence. What such a species would look like is a feast for the imagination, but we don't have to know what they look like to search for signs of their presence, because such organisms would use some of the energy of their host star to survive and propagate. Stars that seem to cool faster than stellar models can account for could be hosts for what the researchers call nuclear life. Several such stars have been observed, and their slightly accelerated cooling is still a mystery. Stars that dim erratically without explanation could be a good place to look for alien life too, like Epic 2497066694 or HD 139139, a binary star located around 350 light years away from us. Astronomers have identified 28 dips in this brightness. While the drops in light are mostly the same, there is also a problem. The time between them seems totally random without any explanation as to what could cause these dips. The researchers are careful to note that to link these stars to nuclear life would be an extremely long bow to draw. But there are interesting anomalies out there, and interesting possibilities too. Since these aliens would be evolving very fast, they could find a way to explore the cosmos beyond their star, as we have done, and they could establish communication and travel systems between stars. It's all extremely theoretical, but wild ideas can be a very good way to make new discoveries. The researchers plan to continue their line of inquiry by developing simulations of cosmic necklaces in stars. It may not lead us to glittering star aliens, but even if it doesn't, it could give us a better understanding of cosmic strings and monopoles. So do you think the jinns are real? Perhaps could the Bible and Quran actually be referring to such an alien forged from the sun? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below and make sure to subscribe. This video was made in collaboration with the YouTube channel The Mysterious Middle East. They make X-Files rated videos on paranormal events in the Middle East, so do check out their channel if you are interested. They also recently made a video on King Alexander and Gog and Magog.